I'm going bouncing, stepping rock and super say okay, okay, on them, I'm definitely that when I'm done, they know that I ain't playing with them anymore. I'm going to may a man to shit. What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG down there on the YouTube.com. We really like magic a lot, and we like making decks and such. And last time we made a deck, we did Green Black Delirium. At the end of that, I asked you what you'd want to see more. I really want to make a mono colored deck, so is it going to be mono red, mono white? And the answer was mono red by a mile. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with mono red right now. Of course, you can make mono red aggro. That's always a possibility somehow. There's mono red tokens deck floating around out there. Mono red Eldrazi and Wedge over at the Mana Source beat us to the punch by one day, it seems, with uh, mono red burn. And that's a budget deck, and it actually looks pretty good. If you haven't checked it out yet, go check it out when you finish this video. But it looks, looks like a pretty fine deck. But one thing I did notice is that in the comments of his video, he told somebody red deck wins is not necessarily a thing in this format, and that, my fellow wizard, is where I must respectfully disagree. Now, I say that because I think there's actually a pretty strong case for mono-red dragons, of all things, right now, um, in this format. We just had a really good dragon get printed, and we still have a very awesome dragon that got printed a year or so ago. So, with that in mind, let's take a look at what we got here, because I think we have a lot of the tools necessary to excel in this standard. Since this is a dragon's deck, I should probably go ahead and tell you about the dragons. We're going to play four copies of Thunderbreak Region and three copies of Mirrorwing Dragon in the deck. Thunderbreak Region is still really good. He saw a lot of play early on in his lifespan. Um, and then Grasp of Darkness came out. And yeah, we had Languish before then, but really since Grasp came out, no one's using Thunderbreak Region. And I understand why. But even if they try to grasp him, they're still going to take three damage. Not bad at all. He's a four mana, four four flyer. That's awesome. Allows us to play um, Draconic Roar. We'll get to that in a second. So Thunderbreak Region is still a very high value creature that's going to deal some damage to them if they try to remove it, unless they like sweep it, you know, languish, something like that. Um, and Mirrorwing Dragon is just great. This is a great card, you guys. I'm serious. This card is very good. Um, even for five mana. Five mana feels like the next evolution of Thunderbreak Region. You know, just pay one more mana. You need an extra toughness so they can't grasp it. They won't die to languish. That's good. And it's um, don't hit me ability takes sort of a level up too, you know. And if they try to ruin his path or, you know, anything, Declaration and Stone this, any spot removal, um, it's going to hit their entire team. For the most part, his don't hit me ability reads that it has hexproof against spot removal. <laughs> they're just not, they're not going to risk killing their entire team to kill your one dragon most of the time. So this guy's really, really nice. He kills things like Gisela and Abyssin in the air, you know, spirits all day he attacks into and blocks as well. So just like, card is awesome. <laughs> like we're playing Big Red, we want five minute guys anyway. So this is just awesome. And it, and I have to I have to point this out because people will be like, why aren't you playing this card? Um, and I would understand it too. But this <laughs> Mirrorwing Dragon being printed allows us to not play Avaricious Dragon. <laughs> you know, um, Avaricious Dragon just never felt quite right. It was always kind of awkward. And it seems like it'd be at home in like the top of the curve of an aggro deck, but it never even felt really good there, you know. Um, just have not liked the card, and I was one of the people that was most excited about it when it came out. So my, my expectations were really, really tempered when I started playing with the card, and so were everyone else's, because there were a lot of people who thought it was going to be a good card. But it's just like super awkward, and we're trying to do other stuff on turn four, and I'd rather just devote another spot on the curve to playing another dragon than having like two four drop dragons so you know there's a lot of reasons not to play avaricious you know and we've got other things that draw cards all that so i'm glad in a way that we can drop avaricious and i know that we're going to get dislikes for that because there's some fans of avaricious dragon but we don't have to play it <laughs> so i'm not i'm not going to play it um just mirror wing and thunder break are way better than avaricious dragon since we're playing seven dragons in the deck that opens us up to draconic roar which i'm going to play all four copies of just really really good two mana instant speed kills advocates in the early game kills spell quellers that's very very important right now um can sometimes hit players or planeswalkers which can be a problem in the format just draconic roar does it all and even when you can't reveal a dragon or have a dragon in play um it's still a good card like it's still gonna spot remove a guy at instant speed so that's good too so <laughs> definitely play all of these as far as other burn that we're playing and we'll get back to creatures here in a second because we are playing more creatures than just seven but anyway, we'll get back to that in just a second. I want to go through the rest of the burn here because burn and creature removal are like super important in this format 
full of decks that play, you know, 27 to 32 creatures. So let's take a look at three different pieces right here. We're playing three copies of Incendiary Flow, two copies of Roast out of nowhere, and then three copies of Fiery Impulse. Now Impulse, we are playing um, something like 19 main deck spells, so it's pretty easy to get to three damage on this, and it's pretty good in the early game too. Um, just Fiery Impulse, some decks are playing four of copies of this right now because of all these small creatures in the format. And, you know, again, hits Advocates when it um, when you have Spell Mastery, and also hits Spell Quellers, which will be a very, I'm telling you, very important thing in the format. Now, Roast doesn't hit Spell Queller or Avacyn, which is a problem, yes, but we've got other things to do that for us. Um, what it does do is it kills uh, Sylvan Advocates once they get big, which is the only thing we have in the deck that does that. I think it's very important to have an option in this standard um, that kills Sylvan Advocate once it gets big, and I'm not really willing to play um, Lightning Axe because we don't have any other like madness value in the deck. It's not a burn deck, it's just a deck that plays some burn. Um, so, you know, I'm not playing Fiery Temper, I'm not doing that, I'm not playing Tormenting Voice, so I'm just not really willing to play Lightning Axe, but I am willing to play Roast, because even if it doesn't hit Advocate, it will usually find a target, like 90% of the time. And then Incendiary Flow, I'd really kind of like to play four copies of the card, um, has impressed me a couple of times in decks that I've built this standard. Um, so, Incendiary Flow, a lot of people have maligned this card, but it is good against Hangerback Walkers and stuff, and it's just, it's versatile, you know, it can hit Planeswalkers, it can hit players, so it can provide a little bit of reach for us in the late game and just hit them in the face if that's what we need. It can kill Nissas and Lilianas and stuff um, occasionally, whenever we've already hit them. Um, so there's there's also that. And, you know, just killing, again, Spell Quellers and Small Sylvan Advocates is a very important test for removal spells to pass right now. So here's some more burn stuff at the, at the three minute slot now. We're playing three copies of Exquisite Firecraft and then four copies of Collective Defiance. Collective Defiance is like super impressive. Like, it's a great card. It can either for three mana kill one of their biggest creatures. That's not bad. It can hit them in the face for three or hit a Planeswalker for three. That's also good. You know, for four mana, it can do both of those things. Sometimes you'll pay all five. You'll you know, cycle your hand and then do those things. Sometimes you'll just pay three to cycle your hand. Just like the card is super duper versatile. Like it does everything you want it to do. And if you have more mana, it does all of the things. I mean, I could talk about this card, like it's kind of all day. Like it does so many things and all the modes on it are very, very, very usable and relevant. So Collective Defiance, you, good card. And then um, Exquisite Firecraft is in there. Um, sort of is more copies of Defiance, but it's mostly in there for a very tech sort of reason, you know. Um, things like Incendiary Flow and even Collective Defiance can't kill a Liliana or a Nissa that have plus one. They can't do that. Um, but this card can, you know, on curve too. Even if you're on the draw, you know, they drop their Nissa, they drop their Lily, and they plus one it, and then it'll be at four. Next turn, we can go and just firecraft it off the board. And sometimes Gideon too, you know, they'll just like zero it and put a guy out. Um, so you can just kill Gideon. You know, Chandra, you can usually kill. So a lot of the planeswalkers right now you can kill with an exquisite firecraft. Not to mention it just goes to the face or to a creature or whatever. Just another extremely versatile burn spell that does an awful lot right now. But back to creatures, I might as well go ahead and tell you about the two copies of Goblin Dark Dwellers because I just told you about like 19 spells that we can cast with it. So Goblin Dark Dwellers is very good. And yeah, I'm willing to play five five drops. This is big red after all. You know, we've, we've got 25 lands in the deck. We're getting to another a six drop card. So five, I'm not really worried about that playing too many five drops, especially ones that affect the game as much as they do when they hit the board, especially Dark Dwellers. Like, Dark Dwellers is awesome with all of this burn that we're playing. You know, any time that he recasts a Defiance or an Exquisite Firecraft, like, it's just insane, insane value. So I've got to make a place for Dark Dwellers in the deck with all these awesome spells, and here he is. On the opposite end of the curve, I'm just going to play one copy of Dragon Master Outcast in the main. He's still around, you know, he's good against um, decks that board stall, decks that go long. Getting yourself a 4-4 flyer every turn against decks that really don't run that much removal. We can just sit this guy on the board and get a flyer every turn. That's, that's just really, really good. So I want to at least have that option in the deck because I think he's good against a couple of key decks right now. I'm going to play four whole copies of Hamar Garrison in the deck. This is just a really good creature, you guys. Like, I've played in a couple of decks now, and I've really, really liked its performance. You know, we're playing a bunch of three drops in the deck, but this guy's good whether we play in turn three, turn five, turn six, whatever, and so is our burn. You know, depending on the situation, we might play, uh, play burn turn three, this turn four. Maybe this turn three, burn turn four to get it through. You never know. So there's a lot of different options we have on turn three and sometimes we can save this guy for later or we can play him now and then get him through next turn. In just a few turns he's gonna create a bunch of tokens if left unchecked and like I just said there's a bunch of key decks right now that really don't play that much removal. So Hamar Garrison very good and of course 
allows us to play battlements in the deck too, which lets us make this a huge, ridiculous guy. You know, that's that's a thing. Writhing Township can't happen. But it also, battlements allows us to play a bunch of, like, it, it allows us to give our creatures um, haste, which is really, really good on all of our big dragons and our dark dwellers and stuff. So, battlements is good, and I might just play it even if I wasn't playing Garrison, honestly. But, gotta play Mr. Garrison. The thing really is a force right now. And as a three drop creature, it's not bad. It's just a thing that's sort of like, um, can get out of control. It's like a rabble master. And to finish off the main deck, just to top off the curve, two copies of Chandra Flamecaller in the deck because she will just win you the game. Like, she's just a way to win the game, honestly. She can come down and wipe the board if that's what you need her to do. She can cycle your hand, too. That's cool. We got a few things that can draw us cards at the very top of our curve to give us a pseudo-refill. That's awesome. Um, or she can just put six power on the board every turn and start winning you the game that way. So it's, it's good, too. Just Chandra does it all and is probably the most powerful red card in the format. So in big red, you kind of have to play her, right? I don't have to say much about her, she's just uber powerful, so play Chandra. 25 lands in the deck, and I don't really have to babble about it too much. 23 mountains, two high more battlements. We really don't have to get too much fancier than that. Here's our insanely important sideboard right here, because we have one of the best sideboard pieces in the entire format in Rending Volley, and I'll play a whole four. And if I could play like six copies of this right now, I probably would. It's that good. You know, we're going to see a lot of Spell Quellers, a lot of those, a lot of, you know, Reflector Mages, a lot of Avacins, a lot of little white creatures and stuff. Um, so this is just an incredibly good card right now, Rending Volley is. After we side out here, we'll have more Instants and Sorceries, which makes Thermo Alchemist pretty good. This was my number one common in um, Eldritch Moon. I've talked a lot about how much I like this card, and um, it has proven pretty good. Sometimes this will deal anywhere between 6 and 10 or 12 damage if left unchecked over the course of the game. It's a really, really good card right here. Um, and Bedlam Reveler I'd like in the main too, but again, 19 instants and sorceries sounds like a lot in the main deck, but it's not quite enough to power a Bedlam Reveler like I want to, but after boards, it's a lot easier. Here are your power rankings right here. A final score of 66, which is pretty darn competitive, considering that the main deck without the board is gonna cost you about $65. So we're at about a dollar a point, actually a fraction more than a dollar a point, which is always a pretty good rate, honestly. 66 for just, you know, a $65 is very nice. And just with the sideboard, um, it's gonna cost you about $23 for the board, something like that. So you're looking at a little less than $100 to get out the door with this list as described. That's all for now, but there's a bunch of stuff coming down the pipeline that I want to at least touch on for a second. Um, a deck that I've seen a lot of people talk about in the comments section lately that I've taken an interest in, to say the least, is Black Red Burn. I've been brewing that up for a little while, and I'll have results on that in just a couple of weeks. Um, something else that's going to probably take me a week or two here, and I've been seeing a lot of talk of in the comments section, is Red Green Wolves. I've been brewing that up for a while now, but give me another week or two. So I'm really trying to make that deck very competitive, um, and that's proven tougher than I wanted it to be. But still, still, give me a couple of weeks on that, we'll make it work. Um, and I've got a secret video, not a deck tech, but a different kind of video, um, coming down the pipeline in the next couple of weeks, but I'm not going to say too much more about it. I just, you know, secret video, hype. And then everyone's favorite question, what are we doing next time? Here's a couple of decks that I haven't mentioned at all this season, and I've been quietly working on them, and they weren't even in the upcoming deck techs video. Um, it's either going to be, next time I've heard people talk about this in the comments too, it's either going to be Sultai Emerge, could do that, black, you know, Bug Emerge, um, or it's going to be Four Color Evolution, Four Color Eldritch Evolution, which believe me is possible. But until then, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, Hit the thumbs up button. It takes a second and helps us out more than anything you can do. You can also, um, you know, comment on it. I want to know how you feel. Is this deck junk or is it good? You know, I think it's good. Um, or you can also subscribe if you're new and you want to see all that new content I was just babbling on about. So do all that stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm Dev from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards. Races like Mario Kart, but in a blue blaze is how I organize these thoughts. I need too many pages.